Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, art will always be subjective, but uh, this kind of takes things to a different level. And if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you were in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to assume that you do because you're listening to the podcast right now. You can subscribe to it. You can give us that old like, subscribe, five-star rating, basically wherever you get your podcasts. We're on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. It is all good. And plus, we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So please give us a like and subscribe there as well. Uh, Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. You can find us at In The Seats. Easy enough. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest in the world of film, television, film festivals, basically the moving image at large, because if we love to watch it, and write about it and talk about it. We love it when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please, pay us a visit. Well, on this episode, we're, we're doing more hot docs. It is that time of year, nonfiction, as it is the Hot Docs Canadian International Documentary Festival, which is running right now in the greater Toronto area uh, until May 8th, but is also streaming online for anyone in Canada as well. You can view a number of these selections online as well at some point, but on this episode we are diving in, uh, to an interesting little story. Just, it's one that kind of reminds us, uh, the importance of art and sort of the importance of the discussion about art as well. It's called Images of a Nordic Drama from director Niels uh, Gop. And it's the story of a persistent art collector who champions an unknown Norwegian artist after finding a cachet of his paintings in the, in an old barn. But uh, these works have depictions of prostitution and poverty. And they, they seem to offend the artist establishment's uh, bourgeoisie sort of aesthetics and there's a derailment of the of 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 rediscovering of the world rediscovering this artist. It's a really interesting commentary of sort of the uh the snobbery that can happen in in some of these art worlds and it's it really definitely shows uh it it plays culturally as well because it's it's uh it's made in Norway and it's from a Norwegian director and it's it's one of those things that's kind of fascinating to watch, just sort of watch the cultural divide, because, I mean, obviously, it, the, the film talks about a, a very famous artist known as Edward Munch, uh, who also comes from there, but it's basically Munch or nothing, which, to me, as a creative person and as a, an artist in our own, and in my own right, just, wa- you know, watching another, appreciating other people's art, it's, it's amazing to see this... Uh, sort of intransigent behavior in terms of not being open to other styles of uh, creativity and painting and form and that whole stuff. And we had a great talk with Niels uh, just to discuss a lot of the issues in the film and just kind of how jaw-dropping a lot of it is. But, I mean, it is having its international premiere, uh, well, probably as we speak, if you're listening to this right now, at uh, at the Varsity and. uh at 11.30 in the morning on Saturday, April 30th, but there's also going to be another screening on Thursday, May 5th, if this uh, sounds interesting to you, or if it's available online, I think it will be, but uh, first check out our talk with uh, Niels about uh, this really interesting film, because between you and me, it's a good one. All right, well, Niels, obviously, first off, just thank you so much for the time today. I appreciate this. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I mean, congratulations on the film. I think you've made a really fascinating piece of work. Can you walk me through sort of the origins on your end, why you wanted to tell this story? Uh, yeah, I was in an um, exhibition in uh, Vienna uh, called uh, Edvard Munch and uh, Das Unheimliche, because I was, I was planning to make um, uh, a movie, uh, you know, a scary kind of movie. Right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and this was about the, how to create picture that are, you know, kind of scary. 
uh, unheimlich. I don't know exactly what that's in English, but uh, it's some uncanny, maybe is the, uh, the word. And in that exhibition, there was two paintings that I didn't know. I had never heard uh, about this painter. And in this exhibition, you had all the great artists in Europe, like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, everybody. Um, and then uh, I asked uh, the, the people there who, who this painter was, because it was a Norwegian painter. Uh, and they said that, yeah, the, the, this painter, uh, they gave him the name, this Axel Valdemar Johansen. I never heard the name. And then uh, they told me that there was a big exhibition with only his paintings in uh, Vienna. So I went to this exhibition and I was like overwhelmed by the pictures because I have huge canvas pictures. Right, right. So it was like went straight to my house. Uh, it made me a little uncanny, a little scared. <laughs> so, uh, um, and... Uh, so I asked uh, the people there uh, running the uh, exhibition who, who this is, and they gave me the number to uh, Håkon Mehren, the, uh, the guy who's doing the main part in the movie, Håkon. And I called him and I asked, uh, who is this guy? And then he said that we have to sit down and I will tell you. And then he did. And I was overwhelmed by the story. I couldn't believe uh, the story. So uh, it was like... Um, I was thinking, if this is true, if 50% of this story is true, <laughs> I, have to tell it, I have to make a movie of this. And uh, so I started to, to, uh, to interview people and uh, told people that I was going to make the movie. And a lot of people in Norway said, that don't, don't do that, don't touch it. It's too, uh, it's too much uh, emotions in that story. I should stay away from it. But I didn't. So um, uh, I found out that uh, to start to make the movie was easy, but to 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 find the people who didn't like the pictures and um, and ask and interview them was really really uh, not easy. Well, I mean that's the thing that I think really caught me off guard because I mean art is always subjective, obviously, but the reactions that people were having were genuinely caught me off guard like the more you got into this story did you we like was there anything that surprised you along the way or was it just a question of like more amazing things that you kept unfurling the more people were willing to sit down and talk with you more and more surprised i couldn't believe and uh, when i was told that uh, the national uh, museum in norway threatened the uh, museum in berlin by not saying that if you if you if you do this exhibition with axel valdemar johansen you will never get monk pictures from us. I will never let, we will never lend you monk pictures. And as you know, uh, Edvard Munch is really a German artist. Mm. He's born in Norway, but there was, it was the Germans who, who, who uh, accepted him in the first in, in the first place. And and I mean, everyone's reactions almost seem to be like, well, he's not monk. You know, it's not monk, so it's not it's not worth anything. And I mean, that to me is is almost shocking. I'm kind of curious, as you interviewed these people, did you get any sense to to why there was this vociferous reaction? I mean, you can not like something, but the way these people are reacting was was quite shocking, to be perfectly honest. Absolutely. I was like, uh, do you have to be Edvard Munch to, to be accepted in Norway? Is that the, uh, you know, the, uh, the level? Uh, and of course, it's not... Uh, for other painters, nobody can compare, be compared with Edvard Munch. He's an, he's a an world uh, artist. Uh, we have we have no new monk in in Norway, at, uh, and it never has been. So we can't compare people to Edvard Munch. So, but uh, it turned out that Munch liked him. He liked Axel Valdemar Johansen. We found this. Um, uh, that, uh, we were doing research, and there was uh, this, there was only one exhibition after he died, after. Axel Valdemar died. We found in all newspaper clips from that time, 1922, uh, a quotation of Munch and Gustav Igeland, which was the biggest artist in Norway at that time, and still are. And they liked Axel Valdemar. Uh, Munch said that I haven't seen this better pictures in, in the Nordic countries so far. So um, he liked the, uh, the, uh, the pictures, and so did uh, Gustav Igeland. And then for me, it's really strange that they used Monk, Edward Monk, to stop the exhibition in Berlin. That's really, uh, that's really odd. That's surprising. It's unbelievable. 
No, I mean, I've got to imagine in a film of this nature, like when you're doing research and, and you're getting the kind of pushback that you do, you, you're not you're never going to be 100 percent sure if you if you've got the movie. Like, is was there an interview or a sort of a point during filming where, OK, I've got it. This is going to work as a film. No, we were working live for uh, five years. Really? It's not like um, now I, I'm shooting uh, a, a feature movie now. It's much easier because you can plan everything and you can, you can schedule and you can shoot. But making um, a documentary is almost impossible because you never get what you're planning to, to get. Or you get new surprises all the time. <laughs> and uh, people start to say that, no, 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 I don't want to do this interview anyway. So they will uh, just step step off and, uh, and leave me alone with the camera. That's happened uh, many times. So the struggle to find people who could tell me the um, why they didn't like the pictures was really not easy. Which, which is fascinating because, I mean, really isn't the whole purpose of art to sort of create discussion and sort of have people talking about it and sort of thinking about it? This almost seems counterintuitive to sort of art in general. I, I mean, this this is wild to me. I mean, I'm I'm curious, like, did any of your subjects even were any of your subjects even sort of conscious or aware of that, especially given the pushback that you were getting? No, they, I didn't. I, I don't think people were aware of the fact that this is exactly what uh, art should do. I don't think they were th thinking that uh, in that they were giving that source at all. They were like not liking the pictures, and they and this struggle was been going on for almost thirty years when I started to do the movie, uh, and we're still quarreling and uh, hating each other, and uh, this is garbage, no, this is genius, uh, we're a genius, you know, that. that's that's really interesting to work with, because if it'd been like kind of okay pictures, and kind of people were kind of okay with it, it wouldn't be that interesting, but the, the fact that this is garbage on from one part, and this is a, a work, artwork of a genius in, in the middle of that, and I'm not sure what, what it is, but um, uh, what I like was the, uh, the passion uh, that the people uh, gave the whole thing. Because in Norway, we don't show that much, much passion. But in this case, they were like angry uh, and, uh, and fighting. And that and, was interesting. And I mean, passion is what makes it memorable. You're right. Those things that sort of ride down the middle tend to get forgotten. It's got to be sort of the extremes, and I'm kind of curious for you as a filmmaker and a storyteller, is it that passion in that, that, that drives you to sort of any given story? Yeah, the passion in, in, in the story. If, if people were like cold and they didn't really care, that's not interesting. But the fight itself, the, uh, the passion uh, and uh, doing their best to destroy this, car, this artist uh, on, on, on the one side and then doing their best to keep him uh, and make him, uh, give him the space that he, they feel that he needs in uh, Scandinavian art. That was that was a, a, a big fight. It was not like like you know that was like um, a, a feature movie in, in a sense because no, of for the, sure uh, the for sure. And I mean, I love uh, even the slight reference to to Van Gogh's brother about sort of how this man really just wanted to sort of champion this man's art and, and sort of put it out there. And I mean, I'm kind of curious. I, I like, I can't think of any other artist or any other situation where there was either this kind of divisiveness or this kind, or this sort of like one voice sort of trying to push his way through uh, sort of the negativity to get heard. I'm kind of curious for you, in especially in the research part, is there anything else that you found out particularly about the artist because i mean again it's one of he's one of his pictures are so striking but it, not necessarily in a in a comfortable way but in a fascinating way and i mean i'm, I'm kind of surprised i had never heard of this story until now like have you found anything else maybe similar along the ways well never but uh well, I, my feeling uh my personal feeling I, I never tell my personal feeling in the movie but it's so if it like, i think that was um a a bad PR for Norway because he's painting like the, uh, the, uh, the, the size that we don't show, want to show to uh, internationally show off because it's like prostitutes, uh, people uh, not having a good time or uh, people suffering and showing the differences between the, uh, the poor people and the rich people. 
uh, that kind of stuff, because we like to believe in Norway that everybody's equal and it's always been like this. But that's not really true. Uh, we have seen the uh, the nice park all the time, the nice the nice pictures, the nice the paintings. Nobody has really, uh, except I think Munk is uh, the, the one who's showed the uh, the dark side of Norway. Yeah, uh, and I think uh, Axel Waldemar goes way uh, he goes way beyond Munk and shows the uh, really the uh, the truth about the Norwegian society at that point. And I mean, to me, this film really is a is an example of the importance of art in general because it it, it shines a light on sort of realities and truth sometimes the ones we don't necessarily want to see and i mean now that this film is like doing its festival run and getting out there like what do you hope audiences pull away from this yeah i, I hope that um they understand that it's always always a small elite people you know people with uh the definition power yeah who decide everything like which movie is a good movie and, and whether you some movies are trash movies and the uh, same with art that uh, to get conscious of that and, and understand that to get pictures or paintings inside the big museums in Norway, if you have a lot of money, it's easy. But if you don't have the money, only the art is more, almost impossible. So uh, I think uh, the film clearly shows that it's somebody can get into those walls and find the, the, the best space, but then you have to be very rich. And, well, for uh, sure, it, for sure. But I mean, I, it's definitely a tale that just, I mean, at least for me, I mean, as a film critic, as a journalist, it, you know, I've always gone by the mantra, if you like it, it's good. And if you agree with me, that's fine. If you don't move on. But it definitely pushes against sort of the idea of the tastemakers, of the people who know better, quote unquote, exactly. which I've always disagreed with. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so the, the movie is about this uh, decision makers and the people who are who are you know in the power of uh, defining what's what's good and bad. And I think that uh, the most the best thing with uh, art for me is the um, it's not that everybody should like a, a painting, uh, but it's uh, somebody. It's, it's okay to see that I don't like this. I hate this. That's yeah. okay. And so it's and the opposite is okay too. It, it, to get into the museum, you, you don't need everybody to say that this is great paintings. You know, um, Edvard Munch was not accepted in Norway in the beginning yeah. because everybody thought that he was the, the, the pictures like really, really ugly and uh, no taste and uh, the people didn't look like human beings and all that kind of stuff. It was a lot of critics in, uh, on, on Edvard Munch. So when he was accepted in Germany and, be, uh, and became big abroad, then he became big in, in Norway also. For sure, for sure. No, but you know what? I really enjoyed this because, I mean, it's about, it's really a commentary on the commentary of art, at least from my perspective. And I mean, I think that's a beautiful thing to put out there in the world. And I just want to say thanks for the work and thank you so much for the time today. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, for doing this interview. Um, Absolutely. appreciate that. Yeah. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs. <laughs>